Joe and Matt with BMP's Tuning Tuesday, Season 3, Episode 13. Rotational Lucky check. 13. Yes. And Matt did his rotational check. Yep. Rotational check. And All is good. We're rotating. All is good in the world. All is happy. Uh, so aside from Mongolian throat singing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> which which sounds incredibly, the, the, yeah. It's interesting, isn't it? I feel like it's a category on Pornhub, but anyway. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway. <laughs> uh, so we got Melvin Vega saying hi. Hi, guys. Hello. Hi, Melvin. Um, yeah, that's fun. <laughs> <laughs> so my car got attacked by a bird yesterday. I saw that. Dude, I <laughs> laughed. So I watched it. Then I watched it again. <laughs> then I sent it to Amber, and I made her watch it. And I watched over her shoulder while she watched it. <laughs> and it was just, it was like it was perfectly narrated and everything. It was. It was just. Brilliant. <laughs> With your super soft spoken voice. Oh yeah. man. That's exactly what you need in a video like that. Right. Like you hear the undertone of murder. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just like, why is this my life? <laughs> what did I do? Those are the same ones that were eating the grill of my, my truck yeah. uh, the day before. I felt like the And girl Jesse went out there yell or was flapping his arms at him and stuff <laughs> and chased them away. I felt like I was the girl on the No Bear YouTube video. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, so... I was just mad because I went up there. I'm like, why the grill? Why? Yep. Why are you going to mess with the grill? And the headlights. Pick anything else. <laughs> just I know I got like dents all over the side of my car now where paint's just everything. What's up? What's up? <laughs> Flex on me. Oh my hey, God. Matt, you, oh, Jesus. Oh, man. I'll zoom in for you. I did. Like so that's bad boss racing that said that. Um, so there's a lot of Odin stuff coming out lately. There's there is. More Odin stuff coming it's, out. We've been compiling it and then it's just like open floodgates. <laughs> yeah, the floodgates are now opening. Um, well, we've had a lot of stuff that we've sat on and we couldn't really talk about and now we can and yeah. there's still more stuff coming down. Yeah. But it uh, it's doing its job. Mm -hmm. I like We're it when a, air and stuff. you're right. I like it when a plan comes together. <laughs> exactly. What else so. should we talk about? Hmm. The Rona is real. The Rona is very real and continuing to annoy me. Yeah. But and inconvenience everybody and hurt everybody. And yeah. All around a bad time. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah. But we are we have been deemed essentials. We are here through so. this. Giving you the question that it, answers it sounds the question in, and it sounds incredibly selfish and it is, but I'm enjoying being an essential driving to work without the non essentials on the road. <laughs> so, so we got paid I haven't seen a is. single traffic accident. <laughs> I just wanna point I that out. I, I wanna point that out. <laughs> I want to point this out. I've gone across I-4 three times like without a single up. traffic accident that I've seen. Is it just me or like literally is the world like changing, bro? Like, <laughs> because people have to stay inside, right? Right. Like, I feel like sometimes when it maybe it's, I don't know, maybe I'm just weird, but I feel like it's gotten colder recently. I feel like, <laughs> I feel like you know, maybe I'm just crazy. I, don't know. <laughs> I mean, stuff happens. There's, there's wind fronts, cold fronts. Birds attacking cars, it's just, it's crazy out there. Paul Lucas, how accurate is math pounds per minute? Peyton Lucas. Or Peyton, Jesus. sorry. Patton, Peyton. What's an I between friends? <laughs> how accurate is math pounds per minute by 9.8 to crank horsepower? That depends. Because that does not take into account parasitic losses across drivetrain or the engine. And it also is completely dependent on if you have super accurate injector modeling. And how close you are to MBT. There is that as well. If you put 87 in it, yeah. I can assure you <laughs> right. it's nowhere It's going to move close. the same amount of air. It's just not yeah. going to make any power. That. Sorry, I'm getting something off my pad. <laughs> Everything's fine. <laughs> Keenan Conan. Hey, guys. Auto swap has been completed. Got the 345 Mickey Thompson ET streets in the rear, and I've been hooking from digs lately. He was asking, remember, he was asking yeah. us about changing, he was thinking about changing gears there for a while, and he did mm -hmm. it in the GT500. Yeah. Is that beat a 1,000 horsepower Dodge Demon and a night at 920, 720s. Hmm. Nice. That's about right. Should be a lot of fun. Um, MDR Cook, what is Odin? Haven't tuned in for a while. So uh, that's our new supercharger for 2018 up stuff. Yes. 
It's a 2.65 liter TDS. Flipped upside down and face Flipped forward. Upside down. Yeah, there's lots of videos about it. I'd suggest. <laughs> we did. We rotated it every way. <laughs> there you go. There's your next video. Oh man. It. Uh, we we turned it every way we could turn it. I can't say the next word. <laughs> I don't. She can't either. <laughs> We got bad boss racing. <laughs> I've know I've asked this before, but I can't remember pricing and how many credits I need. But your tune on American Muscle is that just a tune through an SCT device, or does that include HP Engage? Does not include HP Engage. SCT device is so if you're talking to an NA boss, that'd just be two hundred. I don't know what AM's price is on it. That's our price, and then an Engage would be two credits. All the credits. And then bad boss racing again. I have a gift card, so I'll order today if it. Will work. Ooh, gift card. Well, it should work, yes. It's a gift card. Hmm. Somebody was really nice to give you a gift card. I know, right? That was really nice of them. Unless you got yourself a gift card. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I mean, that's just you being nice to yourself. <laughs> like, this is for later. You've done good. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> maybe, I want this to be entirely may, maybe, his, for the gift card maybe his wife or girlfriend won't let him spend money, so he bought himself a gift card, and then he's like, look, honey, someone got me a gift card to VMP. Bro, I'm not going to name them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to name them. But <laughs> there was an employee who, uh, we'll just say may or may not still work here, uh, <laughs> that, uh, that went through this, like went through exactly what you just described. See, there you go. Where it was like, my wife doesn't want me to do this, so I have to push my money over this way. And we had a long time. I was like, dude, are you sure you're happy? Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, Bob. <laughs> So since I don't see a question on here, we I feel like we got to get Brian. We Brian needs his own show for Mustangs. Yes, we did. Eighteen to twenty. Yes, yeah, so we had it on SCT Engage and HP. We had it on Engage. We've had it for a while. Yep. We finally and went then through the trouble of converting it back. Mike to did. Good old yeah. Mike. He went out there and beat on the car and swore at it. Came yep. back in, beat on it some more, swore at it some more. And went back to his original there. file, yep. and it all worked. <laughs> yep. So he uh, he did very good on that and got it all working. Mm -hmm. um, that was while we were doing uh, we were doing Viper things. Yeah. And that was a fun car. I was doing more O's and stuff too. Yeah, you were doing O's and stuff. I was doing Viper things and Corvette things. I had a lot of fun with that Viper. It was a nice mm -hmm. car. It was. Mm -hmm. And we so. have Neil Thomas, our Grip Tech pulleys hard on belts. Uh, yes. Yes. That's how they work. Mm -hmm. They're uh, like sandpaper pulleys. <laughs> But they work really good. So, yeah, there's no way around that, unfortunately. It's kind of like uh, having a tire that's set up for yeah. like a really hard tire versus a really soft tire, yeah. except it's the surface you're talking about, not the rubber. Yeah, it's like a... There's a give and take when it comes to friction. Yeah. And traction. It's like a, like a Nanking fortune cookie tire versus a Mickey Thompson. Or like a situation. plastic tire versus right. a rubber tire. <laughs> right. Which one's going to wear out faster? And then we have Chris Longley. Are you guys still working on the Gen 3R for a 304 Cobra? Justin will talk about that when he wants to talk about it. We cannot confirm or deny these yeah. accusations. Yeah, there's been posts about it. Sometimes you find out stuff before we do. Yeah. <laughs> Tyler Whitley <laughs> just bought a 2020 F-150 502 two-wheel drive Velocity Blue with a 315 rear end yesterday. First mod suggestions for a little more performance, but we'll still keep the warranty valid. Odin. <laughs> so and then take it back off if your primary concern is warranty don't do shit to it yeah um or find a warranty friendly dealership yeah exactly yeah that's it's kind of like my suggestion focus on uh appearance mods that don't affect anything in the drivetrain if your concern is warranty but we'll be happy to sell you an odin supercharger and make all the really cool horsepowers i bought a brand new truck and within a week I was like, well, when I bought the truck, I'm like, I don't want a warrant. Can I get money off if I don't get a warranty? Because I don't want it. Because I'm not, I don't need it. Yeah. I don't, I'm my warranty. My, uh, my 2012, I drained the oil and changed the filter while I was installing the Pro Charger mm -hmm. for the first time. Mm -hmm. It had 1,300 miles on it. So, yep. <laughs> I was like, well, it came in for its first oil change and a Pro Charger. And it's gone. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Brian. Control C, Control V. <laughs> <laughs> He's got it. Zimmer. 
<laughs> Keon Cohen with a solid bunch. What do you expect? I'll run because I did an untimed pass last night on the private track and I hit a speed of 140 at the light. Would you say that's a low nine second pass? Yeah. Was Keon the one? I one believe he was in the hot. Yeah, he was. I believe he said he was in the high nines before. The 140 should be nines. Yeah, for I don't, sure. I can't say whether that's going to be low or mid nines. Call up, order a draggy. <laughs> yeah, and then you can. And test then it, it and then you, you can test it wherever you want, and it will be incredibly accurate. It's actually freakishly accurate. Yeah. So, if you can get it to hook, is the trick. Yeah, obviously you're not going to be on a prepped track, but you could prep Mexico just the same. Mm -hmm. I hear Mexican it, streets are pretty sticky. We tried it at speed road, right? Mm -hmm. It was like. Yeah, we tried it on an 840 yeah. car, and it was within within a hundredth or something like that. Mm -hmm. So it's very accurate. We got Alan Taylor, Gen 2 Coyote with upgraded pistons, rods, head, and main studs. How much horsepower can he handle, and what horsepower would a BMP Gen 3 with a 69 millimeter fully make? 85 headers, no cap, four level two fuel system. Alan, you're in my messages. We've been talking about this via Messenger. Yep. It'll make power. Yep. Um, if you're going to be running a Gen 3 with a 69, you should probably put sleeves in the motor. Um, yeah, because you're going to be Gen 2 Coyote without sleeves, I thousand ish. Yeah, and it'll do that without really trying all that hard. Yeah. Um, wheel is hard because if I recall correctly, or no, because I think his car is manual. I think he put a Magnum in it at one point. Mm. I can't remember though. Um, It'll make eight nine hundred pretty easy. I had a, it's just a sixes car on the dyno with a, I think it was a seventy nine millimeter upper and a five percent on the eighty five, and we were touching like eight eighties, almost nine hundred on that. Which is still fine on stock sleeves. Yeah, but so. sixty nine millimeter pulley, you're talking ten millimeters, three more, three to four more pounds of boost. Yeah, he'll um, be in the nine hundreds. Yeah, I would stop there. <laughs> personally, personally, or put sleeves in it. Yeah. Oh, bother. Is it about the birds? It is. I can see it coming. There's no pasty. There's no pasty. There we go. Larry Duran. Hey, gents, cannot wait to see what the car will put down this time around. P.S. I'm bringing the weapons for the birds. <laughs> <laughs> I know nothing of weapons for the birds. Yeah, you can. Just let me clarify that. Yeah, I don't think you're even allowed to chase them around. Really. Don't let anyone find out. <laughs> because you will have a bad time in the state of Florida if you mess with one of those birds. Yeah, remember the lady that rode a manatee? It's about the same level. Yeah. <laughs> no, they're, no, they're, they're, they're endangered. They're protected or endangered. You can't mess with I'm still stuck on the lady that rode a manatee. Oh, yeah, nice. they, they, they made an example. This lady, she got out of the boat and was being a dumbass, and she kind of rode around on, a manatee, on the back of a manatee, and she got, like, seven years. Did she hurt it? No, she just rode it. But because it's endangered, you can't touch them. She got, they made an example out of her. Like, she got more jail time than, like, people that embezzle money from companies. She got more jail time than OJ. Yeah. <laughs> There's that. So, yeah, I can't remember who it was. If you just Google woman goes to jail for riding manatee, you'll see what I'm talking about. She got oh, some <laughs> Google fingers. So, and yeah, the Sand Hill, they're a threatened. <laughs> see? I wasn't wrong. The headline. <laughs> the headline is Florida woman. You see? And then, uh, yeah, so the, the birds are kind of the same thing. You can't mess with them, or they get really, really upset. Pete, peel, She was just. Right now. I'm not condoning it. She's been a dumbass, but still. <laughs> like they definitely made an example out of her. For you know what I mean? Like they were like, hey, if we give her a ridiculous punishment, no one will ever do this. So. And she probably got out on good. Yeah, good she probably did a week. Six months later. Yeah, she probably did a week for good behavior, but. So anyway. They don't play around with their fish and wildlife down here by any means. No. So. Anyway, and what's going on with the, uh, you have any more questions? Oh, yay. So it's a $500 fine and up to $60, wow. 60 days in jail as of 2002. I don't know if the law has changed. To mess for messing with a crane. Yeah. Does it say anything about chasing it around, yelling at it? <laughs> I don't know. 
This guy killed one of them. Oh, well, see, that's different. Yeah. That's different. Not advisable. Not advisable. If you accidentally... I heard if you can get, I heard you can get in trouble just for hitting so one got, of the car by accident. Yeah, two misdemeanor charges: one for shooting from a county maintained road, and the other for killing a Florida sandhill crane. Oh, so he just straight killed that damn thing. Right. Yeah. Poor, each, poor each bird. I wouldn't condone that. Each one of those penalties is five hundred dollar fine. I can't. Con- yeah, I can't deal. condone that. Chasing them around because they're annoying—that's different. <laughs> yeah, that's called fighting fire with fire. Right. Exactly. He did the right thing. He revved his. He revved his motor. And he honked his. Horn. He gave it all two hundred and sixty horsepower. No, no, no! Don't give it too much credit. That's two hundred. <laughs> <laughs> and then I love like my favorite part of the whole video. For, explain the video real fast, just for anybody who doesn't know what we're talking about. <sighs> so I recorded a series of videos yesterday of a crane attacking my car when I went to leave work. Yeah, they don't like other cranes. So when they see their reflection in shiny black door panels. Or black fenders. Or black fenders or platinum grills on Super Duties. Yeah. They see their reflection and they lose their mind and they and start they attacking attack it. it. And they've got about an eight inch long beak that does a tremendous amount of damage to body work. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and they, so you think were... a really big woodpecker. That, yes, like, think of a giant woodpecker, yes. Exactly. So, and, so you were leaving and... They saw their the, the the mom bird saw her saw reflection. Saw some other bird reflecting on her. <laughs> saw, yeah, saw this other bird flexing on her, and she decided she was going to bow up on your crown vic, and that yep. was it. Yep. And it, like the it threw beaks at my vic. <laughs> it did throw beaks. <laughs> yeah. Joe and his bird about went time. through hands, and that was. That. Yeah, it was a bad time. Um, and like I said, this is a serial offender because that was the same one that went after the grill on my truck. Yeah. And then I think they. Well, the Death Star is a rolling black mirror. mirror. Right. Yeah. <laughs> like the show. Yeah. yeah. And then we have Alan Taylor again. What pull you then to not have to not have to sleeve? Seventy five. Uh, Seventy nine, seventy five is the max I do if you're not looking to sleeve it. Larry Duran, too too late now, I suppose. Yeah. At the end of the day, a little too late, and because he's referring to the cranes and the weapons. Tyler and, White. Yeah, this one. Oh, is that the truck guy? Yes. Yeah, see? Odin is, but I don't see it on the website. Uh, just call and talk to our salespeople. It's definitely on the website. It just, you may not have the right year, make, model. So yeah, it may. To show up. Yeah. Especially if you're looking for an F-150. Call and talk to Steve or Paul, mm-hmm. and they can point you in the right direction. And then Keon Cohen, I was running 9.8 to like 148 to 153, but my pull last night felt amazing. Fast. AF. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm it's amazing how much pa- slowly, amazing yeah. how much time you lose clutching forward. in, shifting, clutching out, yeah, getting back auto, on the gas. With an auto, it just keeps yanking. <laughs> right, you just go. <laughs> so, yeah, I would. I mean, if you went 980s before, then you're calling. You're you're looking at a 930 car ish, give or take. Yeah, what I don't understand is how it was how. He knows it was 140 through the trap. But doesn't well, but he was—he said he was 140, like on some some Mexico roads, uh, okay. going to some lights kind of situation. He could have very well been going faster and didn't realize it. Yeah, it's, it's a quad. Oh my bad. So <laughs> it, yeah, it could totally be like low to mid nines, but at the end of the day, you'll know when you take it to the track. Brandon Cormier, uh, how much benefit would a Roush 2650-2018 F-150 benefit from a grip tech pulley of the same size shifting at 7200 RPM? Not sure if I would want to go smaller due to heat problems. I wouldn't really go smaller at all. Well, he's on um, he's on boost aid. That's my guy. Yeah, I remember. The grip tech pulley, if you're talking the same diameter as a normal pulley, is probably going to pick up a pound of boost. But at the same time, boost aid isn't going to fix Not JTs. Yet. We need to get It'll him into an the Odin. More consistent, but... We need to get yeah. the Roush off that truck and put an Odin on there. It'll pick up like a hundred at the same power, same boost level, and the world yeah. will be so much and better. The IATs will be so much the happier. The IATs will go down. The world will just be a better place. Just better all around. Uh-huh. And then Michael Curbello, hey guys, I recently purchased a 2014 GT500 and would like to max out power wise on stock block as of right now. Do you, stock blower. As of right now. Stock blower, my bad. Do you know more or less how much the stock blower can make? The most? I've seen them make in yeah. the thousands on build motors with. Cams and 
All that shit. Yeah, the most, like nine. the most I have made on a stock. You can make whatever as long as you have the bottom end to support it and the engine to support it. You do a high compression canned 5.8, you Jeremy. can make a whole lot of power with a stock blower. If you don't do that, then it's probably going to be around 800 wheel, where that blower is going to be like hella done. Yep. Your engine's probably going to be hella done at that point. There's too. that as well. And that's an expensive engine. You don't want to hurt that one. No. And like, can you run it at that level? Yeah, with proper octane, but it's, it's one of those things where it's not going to live forever yeah. at that level. Facts. Um, Evan Greer. At what power level do you recommend changing oil pump gear and crankshafts from? I don't recommend it at a power level. I recommend it at a driving style. Yep. If you're a rev limiter kind of guy, change yeah, it. Yeah, a rev limiter higher than factory rev limiter, and you like to party up there, then yeah, it's probably a good idea to have oil pump gear and crankshafts. <laughs> Jeremy. I use pump gear. Jeremy said, hey, yeah. Omis. <laughs> he said, I, Jeremy said, I hear Sandhill cranes are scared of the yelling deer. <laughs> God, dude, if we had some deer versus some, some cranes, I just, there's no reason to go on with life. No. <laughs> he says, uh, uh, he says that he's going to fill your truck with sandhill cranes. Oh, man. Jesus Christ. He really would. <laughs> yeah. The last time we were at NMRA, he filled my entire, he filled the exhaust system of my truck with pine cones. <laughs> like, he just kept shoving pine cones <laughs> into the, the exhaust of my power stroke. I know I've never been. And he's, like, he took, and he felt like it was, he found, like, a stick and was just shoving more pine cones into the exhaust of my truck. It's going to feel like 2006 all over again when fire was coming out of the end of the tailpipe. No, it wasn't even that. It was like I was driving. I had to go to leave. So, no, that was streetcar takeover. So I was leaving streetcar street takeover, and there was just a trail of pine cones <laughs> as they fell out of the exhaust of my truck. We have Dave Glazer. Uh, I have a 2015 GT. I'm a regular customer. Joe does the tuning. I'm going to set up a dyno tune. I want to know, can I use the 56-pound injectors with the 85? Or do I need 1050s? I'm going to eventually get your 85 fuel system. Dave, you have to remind me what the setup is on your car. If it's blower, you can't use 56s. Yeah. Uh, boosted F-150, so that's Dorian Johnson. How's the Odin F-150 combo along? What was the peak boost on that Odin 850 wheel horsepower Mustang pole? So that was right around 15 pounds peak with a 79 millimeter pulley, a twin 69 throttle body, and one of our BMP cold air intakes. Um, boost at like 5,000, five I think it's 13, 12 or 13 pounds, 6,000. It, it kind of piles on. It, does the, it does the TVS climb at the end. Yeah. They always the, tend to be reasonably flat, and then they kind of go just ever so slightly at yep. the end. <laughs> Just pile it on. Huncho James, how important is the harmonic balancer on a 12 Boss Gen 2 R93? Uh, so you should probably install it. Definitely. <laughs> Just kidding. I think yeah. what he's asking is I know, put he's, an ATI on it. Yeah, he's probably talking about that. Yeah, you can put an ATI on it. It's, I've never seen a factory balancer break, um, at least not on a Coyote. But Correct. not to say that putting an ATI on it is going to put you in the wrong direction. It wouldn't hurt. I've yeah. always told people it doesn't hurt. Yeah. And then you got Mitch. Uh, ORL Mitch, what's the max power you can get out of an 0709 GT500 stock blower? Could you get 600 or 700 of the wheel? If so, would you have to look at upgrading the injectors? Yes, you're going to need to upgrade injectors. Um, the most I have got out of a stock blower was about... 640, if I remember right. I I'm did say a, 640. I did 25 upper only. No lower pulley cams. 93 octane. 670 wheel. Yeah, I would say I did 640. This was a G JLT, an upper long tubes, no cats, on really good 93, and it made 640. Mm -hmm. yeah. That was uh, it, it was like. 18, 19 degrees of timing, something like that. And at the at the end of the day, all that was the, Tom Gow was his name. If you're talking six, <laughs> seven hundred horsepower on a stock blower, on one of those GT five hundreds, you are spinning the fucking snot out of it. Or yeah. you have cams, or you have a build motor. That's the only way. You're yeah, I, make like power I said, it was level. it was done. Like yeah. that that was it. <laughs> yeah. 
That was also like a cold, cool I'd down pull and everything. If your goal is six to seven hundred wheel, there's a lot easier ways to get there than trying to do it on a stock blower. Yeah, like a Gen three yeah. R just done. Yeah. <laughs> In reference to uh, the pine cones coming out of the back of your <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> so Brandon, uh, grip tech pulley one size larger. I really don't think you need a grip tech because the the whole point behind grip tech is to solve belt slip yeah. issues and to add boost in situations where you're correct. You're limited on pulley size. Like you put a two four on it, you can't. You physically can't go smaller. So what do you do to increase boost? You increase traction on the belt to increase blower speed. Correct. Or if you're in racing some race class where you're pulley limited, then you can use a then grip. Then you go grip tech. Right, because it will you're make a, a little bit more. You're in a situation where you are heat limited because of what the blower does at a certain speed. You putting a grip tech pulley on that's one size larger puts you in the same square you're in now. Correct. Yeah, there's, I wouldn't there's no worry about it. But belt slip with the pull you have now is not an issue, so I wouldn't worry about it. Yeah. It's just gonna chew up belts and not really get you anything. Yeah. Keon Cohen, hey VMP, this is Keon. This is the other, he's got the other car. He's got the GT500 and then he's got the turbo. Okay, the turbo 19 F150, or turbo 1950 is almost complete. I went to the dyno, made a strong 709-683 from an auto. What product right. do you guys recommend to control the boost and what exhaust you like mostly? Turbos hate exhaust. So yeah. the largest and f most free-flowing exhaust that you can tolerate mm -hmm. is the best. Mm -hmm. um, boost controllers is entirely up to you. Nothing... My concern is if it, if it doesn't already have a boost controller, what is he talking about? He's probably just running on gate. Standpoint? He's probably just running on gate. Well, that's my point. Is he having a trouble controlling it on gate? Oh. Is, it, is that what he's saying? Uh, that's no. usually an issue with the setup of the turbo. Yeah, nothing in the gate. world is more reliable and works better than just springs and the gates. Yeah. You can't ever go wrong with springs and the gates because so, as long as they have a reference, they're going to open. Let's say you're gated <laughs> for 7 pounds and you're trying to increase it to like 11, 12 pounds. The... I'd say that, I shouldn't say the cheapest, one of the most cost effective ones, True I'd say. Boost. True Boost. AM, AM True Boost. boost. Oh, that was a girlfriend. Problem. It's not a boost leash. Oh, okay. That's why it was confusing. Okay. I was like, wait, what? Yeah, because yeah, she has That's a really weird way to word that. But yeah, um, AM, True boost. AM True Boost, if what your goal is, is to increase it. Um, I like that because it's a boost gauge and a boost controller in one. And, and it's you can an, program over boost into it. And you program over boost and it does peak, hold, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So it's it's great bang for the buck. Mm -hmm. It's not fancy by any means, but it Gets it does job, its huh? job very well. And that's all we can ask for sometimes. So next is blank page. Yeah. And then? And no, and then. Okay, okay. He's, he um, wants us to go around again. You see that? It's a circle. Wait, it's Brian's <laughs> question time. That's true. I didn't. Mm. Will you write time. your question in here, and I'll ask it. Okay. okay. I got you. Uh, then let me How about JD? Let me throw you two more. What you got? Oh. Fire away, homie. Mm. Spit that mess. What have you always wanted to know? And Joe will answer it. Bum, bum, bum. <laughs> answer to like 42. Well, it is 42. <laughs> uh. In the meantime, QG Greer P1, SE Manual S550, 10 PSI, free-flowing exhaust, and 18 manifold. How much horsepower would you think that setup would make on 93? Uh, also, oh, what Huey. rear wheel horsepower does the 56-pound injector start to max out? So I don't know what SC you have at 10 pounds. I'd imagine well, it's, it's going to be a, yeah, I'm going to say it's a century because he's got an 18 manifold. Yeah. On 10 pounds, on 93, mid-600s. Yeah, 600, 650 wheel. If it's one of those fancy X series things or 2200 HD, it yeah. might make 670, 700. Um, not usually, not on. No, not usually, but. Yeah, I'd say you're going to be in the low sixes, somewhere in that area. And then we have also what rear wheel horsepower does a 56 pound injector start to max out? That depends on how much pressure you're feeding them. Yep. If you're not running a booster, they'll probably start to max out around 650. Um, if your rail pressure is at about like 42, 38 PSI. This is on gasoline. Yeah, at like 48 <laughs> to 32 PSI of rail pressure. If you bring rail pressure back up to like 55, 58, 
then they're probably going to max out around 700, 720 on gasoline. And then Ruby, the... Ruby, the obnoxious 5.0. <laughs> <laughs> Could you guys explain the benefits of your flex fuel tune on a 19 GT over pure 93 tune? So to explain the benefits, you got to kind of understand what flex fuel is to begin with. So it's flex fuel, as it's sold by the U.S. government, yes. <laughs> is a fuel that varies in ethanol content from E50 to E85 available at gas pumps, usually subsidized in one way or another. Correct, which is just, and it's ethanol blended with a base gasoline. Yep. And, and other chemicals, depending to keep on the time them, of year. Yeah, to keep them mixed. <laughs> exactly. So, so, I mean, the benefits of the flex fuel are going to be, so you can have a true 93 tune, you can have a true E85, to what we would call an E85 tune, which most flex fuel is E85. Mm -hmm. um, you change the tune between the two of those. Mm -hmm. um, flex fuel, you don't. Right, a flex you fuel is tune. you don't have that. You just have the one tune and the computer in the car learns the alcohol c percentage that you have put in the tank and then adjusts its own tune accordingly. Yeah, so, so it, adjusts, it adjusts for ethanol content and timing on its own. Correct. The benefits are you get to be lazy. Mm -hmm. you, don't you don't have, have to, to swap tunes. You don't have to swap the tune, you don't have to test the fuel. Mm -hmm. Is a purpose-built E85 tune on E85 faster Probably, mm -hmm. because it's designed for E85, you have E85, but if you're not the person that wants to measure the content or swap tunes, it's great because it learns between the two. Yep. So if you put E50 in it, it's fine. You can put E60 in it, it's fine. You put E90 in it, it's fine. Doesn't yep. matter. Still going to do the same thing. Facts. To both Joe and Matt, what kind of car is more fun for you guys to tune? Classics that do your soul justice or 1,000 rear horsepower? Mm, Rear wheel that's a good power, question. Power monsters. That's a good question because the big power cars definitely always get the blood running. That's for sure. They do, but I'd say I almost have more fun tuning a the oddball stuff. Maybe. A very well put together setup I haven't tuned before. Yeah. That works. Like I said, the the Viper, for example. Yeah. I had a lot of fun with that. It was mm -hmm. different, challenging, mm -hmm. changed it up a little bit. Because it's like a new game. Yeah. So yeah, it's it basically yeah. It's yeah. like um, it's like playing a demo for a new game that just came out. Right, I think it's that, like wow, look at this. I draw all comparisons this stuff. to that. With like yeah, we, and that's and that works really well. I mean, it, it's not to say that it's boring. You know, if if you you play Call of Duty and all you ever do is play Call of Duty, you get really really good at Call of Duty. Mm -hmm. um, there's nothing wrong with being really really good at Call of Duty, and then all of a sudden now there's <laughs> there's a demo for another game. You're like, ooh, let me go play with this oh, one for a little cool. while. Oh, this is cool. I'm not too bad at this one either, you know. Yeah, or I suck at this. <laughs> Pow! So, variety is the spice of yeah. life. Exactly. And what's yours, JD? I forgot. My car is eventually going to have flex fuel, right? So, what should I see expectation wise if I go put E85 in that? What's the horsepower gain? It depends. Ooh. It depends on what you start off with on ninety three and how timing limited it is. To begin yeah, with. it depends on how good well, no, your ninety three was saying, to like, begin with. A hypothetical situation. Yeah. Let's say we didn't already have your car in the dyno. We didn't know what it made. <clears throat> the gain depends on how much it actually makes on ninety three and how timing tolerant it is. So, like, let's say it makes four fifteen and it's at twenty three degrees, and we go to E eighty five. We don't have issues with knock sensor slowing timing anymore. Right. It sees 31 degrees. Your, your delta or your gain is going to be a lot higher mm -hmm. when that scenario than it is if, let's say, it's on 93 and it sees 29 degrees and the knock sensor is really it. happy, and you go to E85 and it sees 30. Yeah. Then all of a sudden your gain doesn't look as good. Yeah, because so I've like, seen certain 93s in certain parts of the country take 28 degrees of timing. So when you go from 28 on 93 to 29 on 90 or on 85 then at that point in time it's like five, 10 horsepower. yeah you're only at that point in time you're only getting the power gains from the cooling effect of the fuel mm -hmm. versus if you've got garbage 93 and the car usually runs 23 or 24 like you said and all of a sudden now you've got 20 or 29 now you're picking up 20 or 25 yeah 
And if you're a so, 91 octane and it's really bad 91 octane, yeah. then the 85 looks really good. Yeah, <laughs> then you're picking but, up 30. <laughs> but that's where it's like people people will ask, what do I gain? And it's like, well, it, there isn't a magic number that's accurate for all scenarios. The so average, I yeah. I, I appreciate if you. I were to pick an average, I used to tell people and still generally tell people expect somewhere around 20. Mm -hmm. Because generally you're going to pick up at least 10 or so from the cooling effect alone. I'm the pessimistic guy in the sense that someone asks me what it'll gain, I always guess low. So I'll be like anywhere from 5 to 15 horsepower. Yeah. yeah. That's what it, I would say. It I depends on the fuel quality. Right. So, yeah. Yeah, because you can, you can get crappy in 85, too. Just like you can get that, and Correct. if I tell you you're going to gain 15 horsepower and it picks up 25, you're going to be you're mad at me or you're going to be happy with me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Facts. But, yeah. And with that, if there's no additional questions, we out here. I said good day. Catch us, uh, <laughs> catch us in the street. And How about that? No, and then. Um, I, play, I, I refuse no, to play your Chinese food wine games. <laughs> <laughs> I hope no sandhill cranes attack your cars. Like what happened to me? They're and still out there. They live here now. I hope everyone's doing well with Corona. Um, and other than that, have a nice week, guys. We'll see you next Tuesday.